to the mic, they start dimming the lights, you start feeling alright. From Birmingham, home of the Teddy Longs, and the room is stutters. More once you discover, for all of the lovers, Whitney Houston and Roman Reigns. For all of the lovers, and Mickey James and Marvin Gaye. For all of the lovers, and Sasha Banks, Janelle Monet, Silk, Sonic, and Paige. Allow me to say, look, I just found a place, we escape. For every one of us, I was kinda late. So I just made it off the struggle bus. Walking by the fate, cause I know it's right in front of us. Yo, I ain't with the hate, gotta focus on what's great. Ladies and gentlemen, Steph Hardy is on the air. Had to drop a couple bars just to make you all aware. So, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. You know I go by Joe or the rest of the flow. Hey y'all, welcome to a new episode of The Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl Stephanie Hardy. So on this episode, I have a special conversation with one of my wrestling podcast sisters, Lo from Wrestling Wind Down. We get into everything, y'all, so I hope you enjoy this conversation between us girls. This is The Hardy Wrestling Podcast. We're on the road to 100 episodes, y'all. Get into it. So, Lo, I'm going to start by asking you the question I ask all of my guests, and that's when did you fall in love with wrestling? I would say that I fell in love with wrestling around the age of 9 or 10. I definitely, the first time I saw it, I feel like it was love at first sight. Um, Obviously, you know, had to get used to everything and seeing the different superstars and I, I always tell this story. The first time I came across WWE was on Telemundo on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. And I saw John Cena. And I was like, who is this? And I started watching it. I don't speak Spanish. I always say that because everyone's kind of like, well, maybe she understood it. I did not. I was going off what was on the screen. And I just start watching it every week on the Spanish channel. You know, 9 or 10, I didn't know if this was just on that channel. But then, you know, I ventured out. And I realized it came on the USA Network. And I was in there like swimwear. I was watching it every week. I was watching SmackDown. And then ECW kind of started again. And I started watching ECW. And I just fell in love with the different characters that WWE had to offer. Whether it was a woman or a man. Whatever they brought to the table, I was interested in. Um, Obviously, John Cena was one of my first favorites. I still remember one of the wrestling shirts I got of him at Walmart. I wish I still had it because I would be rocking it today. (laughs) But John Cena was one of my favorites. Um, Victoria Molina um, were two of my favorites on the women's side. And, oh, my God, I absolutely loved the characters that they had, even though they were supposed to be, you know, the bad guys. Something about them just interested me. And it might have been, you know, the gear that they had on or the characters that were, they were portraying. I'm not really sure, but I gravitated towards them heavily. And obviously all of Eminem, Melina, Nitro, and Mercury. I, oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's going back there. Definitely. Like, I remember you- I liked Deuce and Domino as well with Cherry because I... I used to dance when I was still, you know, a little kid. And Cherry reminded me of, like, a dancer. Like, her outfits reminded me of costumes that I had wore for recitals. And I just always liked her. I just felt like she was a really good manager. She played her role. And then when she started wrestling, I was like, okay, girl, let's see what you got. You know, I kind of forgot that there was a period where she was wrestling. Like, that was that wasn't around the time I started watching wrestling. Um, but at the same time, it's like around the 2000s, it was always like kind of like these three groups of certain people, like these tag teams with a female at the center of it. And I used to think that was so cool. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you actually thought that was cool as well. And the fact that you started watching wrestling on Telemundo, like, <laughs> you know, I'll never forget the time I actually saw like a wrestling match on a Spanish channel that, that was on my TV. And I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, so that's how it sounds, you know, because they actually had the announcers and the commentators commentating in Spanish and everything. And it was so interesting because yeah. it was just really different because it's just like, of course, you know, 
when you watch something in English, you know, for so long in your whole life, and then all of a sudden you hear it in another language, you're just like, wow. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting. So that's so cool that you watched it, you know, in a different place. And, you know, John Cena, that's the guy, you know? That was the guy of the 2000s. I love him very much. And, <laughs> like, I remember I even got to fight with my dad one time over his chain gang t-shirts. But, oh you know. <laughs> but I can buy it now, though, because I'm great. Right. Period. <laughs> Yes. So when did you realize that you loved using your voice um, in terms of your media career? So I had a radio show when I was in college. It was called The Lowdown. And I was on every Fridays from 6 to 8. And I would play hip hop music and I would play R&B music. And I would do like um, celebrity news as well. And during this time in college, like I wasn't really watching wrestling like that. I kind of fell off. And um, I was just doing, you know, the radio show and I really enjoyed that. But, you know, as I was progressing through my academic career, I realized that at some point, you know, I was going to have to stop the radio show uh, when I graduated or, you know, close to when I graduated. And I always had the idea, well, you know, maybe I could do it like as a podcast. So um, I wanted to do that. And then I kind of sat on it for a while and um, my friend Haley was tweeting one night and she was talking about wrestling and i was like you like wrestling and she was like yeah do you and i was like yeah and you know we had known each other for years before that because we had the same major we had some of the same classes so we were familiar with each other but we had no idea that we both shared that common interest of wrestling until you know she tweeted so we didn't really say anything more about it and then one day we were kind of like, well, you know, she was like, what if we start a podcast? And I was like, oh, yeah. And, you know, start doing my research. I saw there were not a lot of women out there. I saw a couple podcasts. Those wrestling girls were out there. But it was mostly white men. And I was like, OK, this is going to be a little bit interesting because, you know, I can't really look at anyone and be like, OK, I want to mold myself like that. So I was like, we're really just going to have to do what, what we want to do with this show. We can kind of go off how the men have been doing it, but we need to have some type of spin, a niche almost. So Haley really liked beer. I don't drink beer. I might drink a cider every once in a while, like a pineapple cider or apple cider, but you won't catch me with a, a Miller Lite, Bud Light, none of them. I don't drink them. But I was like, what about wine? I start thinking, and I still have the text where I was like, wrestling wine down in all caps. And I was like, that's what the show needs to be called. You have SmackDown, take the smack out, put wine in. It's perfect. And we just went from there. We recorded in our uh, universities. They have like a journalism department. So they have like a TV studio. They have podcast studios. So we recorded there every week. Um, we did WWE recaps. We did a little bit of AEW. We would talk about news and stuff like that. Um, and it was fun. You know, it was something that it was like an outlet for us. We were able to enjoy professional wrestling together and talk about it and you know have this platform where other women who might be in the same boat as we were who are interested in starting a podcast or you know want to hear about this news or the recaps from a woman's perspective they don't have that or they have very minimal so I'm glad that we started that together okay so initially from what I'm hearing is you sort of started your media career in college yeah. And did so did you ever think about doing it like before college? Uh I mean, I I interned at a radio station when I was at the end of high school. So I you know, I had been around like different radio personalities and stuff like that and that's when I kind of was like I think I want to do radio. I always knew I wanted to do some type of broadcast. My first thing when I was in eighth grade was I want to be on TV. I want to be a news anchor. And I still kind of want to do that in the back of my head. But, I, you know, I, then I did my internship and I saw all these amazing professionals, you know, on the radio. And I was like, oh, I really want to do that. And, you know, I was very fortunate to have voiced some commercials and, you know, did PSAs and stuff like that that were on the radio. But I never had my own show. And that was kind of like why I wanted to do it on the college station was because I wasn't going to do it at a, you know, a large conglomerate of radio stations where, you know, they can't, they can't have me test what I can do on their platform. So, you know, a university will. 
And, you know, I'm very fortunate that UNLV had that platform for students that were interested in radio or podcasting to be able to do that. So I would say it started, I was probably like 18 or 19 when I had interned there. So around there. Okay. That's really cool that you, you know, saw that and sort of decided that maybe this is the direction you want to go in. Um, I feel like that sort of inspires me a little bit in a sense, because it's just like, I never thought that I would do anything like this at all. <laughs> and people's journeys are way different, you know, to it and everything. But I right. never thought I'd be in anything like this at all. So it's just like when... I think about my career and where I want to go. That's kind of what I want to do, but I only want to do exclusively wrestling. So right. I don't know exactly how that would work, you know, education wise or how that would work, you know, professionally, of course, as I'm still finding my way because it's only been like two years. But, yeah. you know, just hearing your journey, you know, and how you sort of utilize your educational journey to sort of, you know, feed into your love of wrestling. That's really inspiring. And I really like that. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to utilize that and, you know, let that feed that into your life. So that's amazing. So um, you mentioned some of the factors that was sort of that sort of got you into wrestling. But what exactly keeps you interested even as an adult? I really like the storyline aspect of it. I, I've been a reality TV show fan for so long, and I almost feel like professional wrestling is kind of like a reality TV show. You have these different storylines. You have these characters. You know, whether you like them or you hate them, you're probably going to tune in every week or you're probably going to keep up with it. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of characters, you know, past, present, and in the future that have really kept me interested. One being, you know, Bianca Belair, um, I'm a Bianca Belair stan. I, I can't say it enough. Like, she oh, me has inspired too. me so much. And I wish she would have been in the WWE when I was like nine or 10 and first started watching because we really didn't have that much representation. We had Crystal, who kind of wrestled, but she was mainly a backstage interviewer. You had Queen Charmel, who was with Booker T as his manager, but she didn't wrestle either. So there was no black woman within, you know, Alicia Fox came around I think like a year or two later but when I first start watching wrestling there was no one no black woman in ring who was like you know having matches with Melina or Victoria or Candice Michelle etc so I wish I could have had that so seeing that now and seeing the impact that Bianca Belair has had on you know grown women like myself and you know these young women it really is inspiring and it keeps me interested I've really loved following her journey and you know, seeing people like John Cena come back and, you know, people get being given their flowers, you know, Queen Charmelle at the Hall of Fame. I feel like that was such a great moment to be in person watching. And, you know, I cross my fingers and every time they announce Hall of Fame people, I always want Jazz or Victoria to be in there because I just feel like they deserve it. And that that's another reason that keeps me so interested, because I want to see them get their flowers eventually i want them to get them while they're alive you know they've done so much for this sport whether in wwe or outside and right. i feel like they deserve it at this point um and you know on the men's side as well there's been some incredible performers that have really kept me interested over the years randy orton um i really like carmelo hayes right now Braun breaker um there's just so many. I really liked Big E's rise to, you know, winning money in the bank to eventually holding a title. But I just I enjoy watching these people that work hard and are given the opportunities that they so rightfully deserve. Yes, that is one of the most amazing parts about watching wrestling. It's like when you're invested in a person and then you see more of their story. Of course, you know, it was a lot less, you know, back then because we weren't we didn't have as much access, you know, to them as we do now with social media. But right. then it's just like when you watch their stories and they sort of let you into their world and how they grew up and you find that they're a lot more relatable than you initially thought. And then once you become invested in their story, you want to see them win. And it's just like you're so invested and you want so much more for them when you see that they're not getting as much. And right. it's just like once they finally do get that opportunity to show what they're made of and then they finally reach the top of the mountain, it's almost like you're up there with them. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's like when you mentioned Beyonce Belair, you mentioned Big E, you know, and then I also think about Kofi Kingston and his Kofi Mania moment 
like when they won, I felt like I won. Yeah. <laughs> Even I though agree. it has nothing, nothing to fully do with me, but at the same time, it still has to do with you because you watch them, you know, grow up in a sense. And so once they reach that, you know, goal that they've been reaching for for so long and fighting for for so long, you feel like you're watching these people win and it makes you feel good inside. So that is definitely a reason to stay invested with it. And also when it comes to reality TV, like that's valid as well. Yeah. It's like <laughs> they branched off into reality television, but then, you know, I can see how they could sort of, you know, how they could be, how wrestling can be sort of an unsung hero into um, the existence of reality television, even though a lot of people mm-hmm. probably won't even give it that much credit. Right. Um, that's very valid as well. So yeah, I get it. <laughs> Definitely. So you did mention how you went to um, the Hall of Fame and you experienced Queen Charmel going to the Hall of Fame as well as The Undertaker and as well as the Steiner Brothers um, and Vader as well posthumously. So what has been your favorite live wrestling experience since you've been going to them? Oh, wow. Um, That's a good one. Um, the one that comes to my mind first is when I went to a wrestling show, I want to say I was probably like 10 or 11 and I went with my mom and my mom does not watch wrestling. She was just going because I needed someone to go with and she was just in it to be there. So she originally bought tickets. We get there and they're like, these seats don't exist. And I have made these, you know, these posters. I was in it, girl. And they were like, we can, we're going to move you. We're going to move you right, you know, that curve when they come by the entrance. We're going to seat you right there, but you need to throw your posters away. So I was hurt that I had to throw my posters away, but I threw them away. Mm -hmm. It was such an incredible show. I will never forget that. Like seeing the superstars like right there. And I was at this time, I was still very afraid of Undertaker. He was there. I was just like, oh my God. Like that was probably one of the best moments because you know i was young and i just oh i just remember it like i I still get goosebumps thinking about it because it was just such a cool moment i feel like every kid should have that moment that likes wwe you know you have the kids that get ray mysterio's mask or naomi's glasses and stuff like that like the things that they could take back with them but you know you also have the memories in your head even if you don't get items from superstars you'll always remember you know that first show that you know you sat really close or you got to meet a wwe superstar you know as they were leaving the ring or you know they touched your hand so you know i feel like even if you don't have those memorabilia items for from wwe superstars the memories just last forever and that's one that i'll never forget Okay, so was it a Raw, was it a SmackDown, or was it like a It was a SmackDown. Oh, okay. (laughs) I think it was like my first, no, it wasn't my first show. My first show was a Raw house show, and I remember King Booker was there. And I think that was either my second or my third. Okay, that sounds like a really cool experience. Like, I hate it when they tell you to throw your signs away, though. (laughs) That is like, you're putting that much... Yeah, it's not like I had anything bad on him, of course. I was like 10 or 11, but they just, they didn't want the signs right there, like right at the front, which I don't really understand why now that I think back on it, but who knows? It's like, you work so hard, you know, to make the sign, and then they tell you only for you to throw it away. Like, that would have made me sad too as a little girl, but at least you still had a good experience with your mom. Like, but she she always brings up, She's like, you know what? My ears were ringing the whole time. You were screaming so loud. Like, <laughs> very high pitched scream, you know? I forgot who, who else was there that I was like a fan of where I was screaming that loud. Because I don't think John Cena was there. So I'm trying to figure out who else would have been there for me to be yelling like that. But I, I don't know. I was I was screaming. I was in there. <laughs> wow. That's. That's pretty funny. Because that, that actually sounds like me, too. Like, I'd be screaming <laughs> and into it. Except now, like, the last time I went to a live show was, like, the, was SmackDown in Birmingham in March. Um, mm-hmm. This was the one where, um, sadly, Big E got injured at. Oh, um, yeah. And it's just, when I was there with my boyfriend, it's like, I had to really, like, find a way to scream and yell without, you know, overexerting my voice. 
because <laughs> the last time I went to a wrestling event like that, you know, as an audience member for WWE, I didn't have a podcast and I didn't have, you know, any sort of platform where I'm talking like this. See, at right. this point, it's like I'm still trying to protect my voice while also at the same time still being loud. But right. I don't, but I just let it go and I was like, you know what, I, I'm just gonna be loud and then they'll just they'll just have to deal with it. And <laughs> I still did it and I still had fun and still had at least 80 80 percent of my voice. Oh good, everything, you're good then. Everything was okay. So <laughs> but yeah, live events are amazing. And I also love um um as I grow in my wrestling career, I love commentating for them too. Yeah. It's fun. I love it so much. So who would you say are your top five wrestlers, male, female, or non-binary? Of all time? Yeah, of all time. Okay. Um, Bianca Belair, Victoria, uh, Jazz, Jacqueline, and you know what? I really love Willow Nightingale. Like, oh my god, I love her. I just, I don't know what it is, but I really like watching her in the ring, and I just feel like she's so bubbly. I'm going to put her as the fifth. Even though I'm a new fan, I feel like at this point, I'm very comfortable putting her there. What about you? Oh, it's so funny that you said her, because it's like, I fell in love with her on AEW, and that was the first time I ever saw her. Like, I had heard people, you know, say her name a lot, but I had just never seen her before. And the first time I saw her was on AEW, and she was fighting in the Owen Hart tournament. And mm-hmm. I wanted her to win so bad because I just fell in love with her athleticism, and I just loved her hair and just her beauty. Like, it's just everything yes. about her is just so gorgeous. And I was just like, why didn't she win? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no shade to my baddie, Red Velvet. But I wanted Willow to win so bad because yeah. I just loved her and just everything she had. And I was just like, oh, I love her too. And hopefully I can get her on the podcast at some point. Well, that would but, be amazing. Oh, my God. I would I would just fan, I would fangirl out for maybe 15 <laughs> seconds, but then I'd get it together um, and just be professional. But, oh, well, my top five is kind of different because it's like, my, I have male and then I have female. Yeah, um, I just realized that I listed all women. I... I- but that's okay though. <laughs> I have a men's one, but I uh, I can't even start. I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Bret Hart, um, John Cena, um, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I'm missing two, um. <laughs> greatest of all time i'm like i have a grade of of this month um that's fine you know i'm gonna throw wardlow in there i feel Uh like wardlow's wardlow prepare to be sick of me okay i'm gonna keep (laughs) on mentioning you on everything i do okay (laughs) wardlow and I'm going to throw Paul London in there, which I feel like is a, a spicy one. But yeah, I watched Paul London, you know, when I was watching like Eminem and um, Deuce and Domino. And I felt like he was always just so agile and he just does great things in the ring. So I'm mm-hmm. going to throw Paul London in there. Yeah, him and Brian Kendrick were a really great tag team. They were. They worked very they well were together. Amazing. I feel like the 2000s on SmackDown, it's like they don't get enough love for their tag team they don't and i feel like that should be something that should be talked about a little bit a little bit more among wrestling circles to talk about tag teams on smackdown in the 2000s because that was a really rare rare time it really was yeah and then to, to just look at you know tag team wrestling it looks a little bit different now but if you just look at it back then, like it was really good then too. But a lot of people really don't give it that much credit because there were so many other things going on. But right, yeah. But Jesus, like they deserve credit for their tag team work back then. But to answer my question that you directed back at me, which doesn't happen often, um, <laughs> my top five women is number one Sasha Banks. Um, she's the greatest to me. Number two, I would say, is probably. Trish Stratus, number three, um, Lita, number four, um, Jazz, and number five, I would say, um, is Naomi. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I'm Very gonna delicious. keep saying their names because this is my show. Um, period. <laughs> period. Exactly. Um, and for the men, the men is a little bit harder though. Like, yeah. But I do know my number one is The Rock. Um, okay. The Rock is my number one. Um, um, number two, I would say, is probably Shawn Michaels. Number three, Eddie Guerrero. And number four, Rey Mysterio. And number five, um, Rob Van Dam. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. so I still have this are... memory of Rob Van Dam. I don't know how much I can say on here, but... Um... You can say whatever you Iridian and I went to Wally Mania, and the only thing that I really remember clearly, I wasn't, I didn't have any wine that night. I just, you know, I'm just remembering right now. But Rob Van Dam and, Kay Rob Van Dam and Katie Forbes, oh my goodness. Like, if you see them in person, that's an experience. I was just oh, like, really? yes, Rob Van Dam was smoking a blunt while Katie Forbes twerked next to him. And I was like, you know what? This is worth the thirty dollars that I paid to get in here. Wale Mania looks so fun. It was. It was. Like it just looks like such a fun experience with all the wrestlers in there. You're in there watching people rap and just have fun and everything. Like it just looks really fun. Like it. It seems like a really great part of the WrestleMania experience. Yeah, I agree. And then I love Wale anyway as a rapper. <laughs> so it's just like. That and wrestling put together is like my head would probably explode with excitement. <laughs> like seriously, it would just be too much for my soul to to put together. But Rob Van Dam is definitely one of my favorites. I used to love him, you know, young. And then I loved his theme song because I did share that with you on social media. That that was oh, yes, one of my did. favorite theme songs ever. Like to this day, if you play one of a kind, I'm losing it. <laughs> <laughs> I am completely losing it. I just love him. I love him and just everything he was able to do and how he was the first wrestler I was able, I ever saw, you know, jump up on like a cage and actually just stay there. Oh, I was like, oh my God, it's Spider-Man. Like, I just, I just love that so much. I was, oh my God. I'm a sucker for a high flyer. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I'm a sucker for a technical wrestler too. So, and a very showy person as well. So, I just kind of run the gamut. So there we go. Those are some of my favorites. And of course, you know, favorites are always being added. You know, the more I learn, right. the more I'm supposed to as well. I love everybody. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it just, it'll, it'll go in and out sometimes. I agree. So, yeah. so I love how you decided to make your podcast, you know, and turn it into like a niche using wine you know because that's something i've never really thought about before and i think that was something that interested me about your platform it's just the fact that you decide to combine wrestling and wine and just sort of chilling out and watching watching it while drinking your favorite drink because mm -hmm. i remember i did that one time with some, with some sangria and i had the craziest experience because i think this was the night sasha banks won um her first raw women's title against charlotte and I just so happened to be, you know, drinking and then I was watching it and I was just like, and when she won, I kid you not, I was sitting on the living room floor and I was just crying. I was like, oh my God, because <laughs> I love Sasha so much. And it's just like, when she won, I was like, it happened, oh my God. And I just started crying. Yeah. Um, so is that something, so is that something that you tend to do a lot of the time while you're watching wrestling? Um, is you know drink a favorite spirited drink you know what it depends um it de yeah it definitely depends like when i go to live events you know sometimes i'll have a drink sometimes i won't but usually when i'm watching a pay-per-view it depends as well like i i really do pay attention to twitter when the pay-per-views are on because people they say their best things when the pay-per-views are on so yeah. um i usually will keep an eye on there and you know see if i have anything to add with and you know, I like to keep a clear mind when I'm doing that. So I usually won't be, you know, consuming too much. But um, it just depends. It depends on my mood for the day. I completely understand that. So it's so funny because you talk about Twitter. Like, people be popping off on Twitter. They sure do. Like, live tweeting <laughs> is such a fun experience. You know, if, if it's done right and if you're not, you know, being mean or whatever. But... Right. 
yeah like live tweeting is one of the most funnest experiences i've ever had in my life like especially when it comes to wrestling and then you see the people who make all kinds of stuff where they make you laugh and stuff like that mm-hmm. like yeah. public <laughs> enemies they are by hands down one they of the funniest they are so good i don't know how they have videos just waiting to use for reactions but they have the perfect video for everything and skinny mysterio karen same thing she has a picture and a video for everything i'm like i have to search to find a picture to use if i want to be funny like you guys just have them at your leisure i wish i could be that (laughs) oh my god me too i have to look for them as well especially if i think about something immediately i'm gonna oh my god i gotta do this real quick (laughs) you know before someone else says it or before i forget or something like that so i understand that struggle i understand it but it's just so funny to see the type of stuff that people come up with and people make comparisons to or stuff like that yeah it's really funny and I'm glad that you, you know, came up with that and had the courage to move forward with combining, you know, your love of wine with wrestling. I think that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So as you evolved as a podcast host in the wrestling world, were there any obstacles that you faced and how did you overcome them? Yeah, so I had mentioned earlier that, you know, it used to be a two-person show. So it was my friend Haley and I, and we started um, we started in 2019, um, April of 2019. And a year later, or less than a year later, the pandemic started. And we were kind of like, okay, what are we going to do? So we had kind of taken a little break and, you know, we're trying to figure out if we were going to do virtual or what. And Haley actually ended up moving. So Haley lives in Seattle now. So, you know, obviously we didn't have the leisure of being, you know, in the same studio anymore and stuff like that. And I think we recorded one episode in May of 2020. And then um, at that time, you know, we had kind of uh, Haley had kind of not, you know, wasn't really interested in wrestling anymore. Um, and she was kind of starting to fall out. And in October of 2020, 20, of 2020 that was when she stepped away from the show which i'm not sure if people saw that but people still think it's me and her it's me it's it's me over here so um that was a little bit of a challenge because you know i still wanted to, i still wanted it to be wrestling wind down what we started with but i knew that it was going to become you know kind of like an extension of me at this point I wasn't really looking to get another co-host you know I really like the idea of having different people on each week to tell their stories maybe have a you know sometimes a consistent co-host but nothing permanent so I realized that wrestling wind down was really just an extension of me so since you know since then I've really started to integrate you know more of myself into stuff and you know kind of make the the brand of wrestling wind down my voice you know not much not so much of you know, here's our episode. Here's this. Here's that. Very like professional. I still am professional by nature, but I feel like I've added a little bit of my flair to it. And I'm really excited that, you know, soon we'll be rebranding, still wrestling wind down, but, you know, something logo wise and, you know, sound wise in terms of like um, intro, outro music that is more me, you know, that fits kind of what I like. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I'm very excited for that. It's coming very soon. And that was that was definitely an obstacle of going from having, you know, a co-host, you know, someone that would run the social media with you and stuff like that to, you know, just by yourself. But I've really enjoyed it. And I've made a lot of connections with, you know, different individuals within the wrestling community who I've been able to have on my platform or, you know, have given me advice. So I'm very grateful. Yeah, I imagine that has to be, you know, a little bit of like a major adjustment to go from you having, you know, your own tag team partner in a sense to you having to go it alone. Like, I imagine that had to be, you know, a pretty tough adjustment. And then also navigating it in the midst of the pandemic and everything that it was in the beginning, because Jesus Christ, Um, (laughs) it was a lot like it was a lot. Um, and just the idea that you were able to have the courage, you know, to go for it and still do it and still, you know, push forward for it and find your voice and your passion within it and making it sort of fit you and not sort of make or and not like, you know, 
I'm trying to say you like basically just making it fit you. Like it's yeah, just a, yeah. Because when we really you know when we thing. started, yeah, when we started, it was you know the logo, the sound, like the intro and outro. Um, you know, my my friend Joy, she creates our logos, and then my friend Fior created our intro and outro music, and it was something that we had both agreed on, and. You know, seeing as Haley has moved on to her, you know, her other endeavors in her life and I'm still here, I feel like it's really important for the brand to grow as well. Um, I still love the logo, don't get me wrong. I still love the intro and outro music, but I feel like we're, you know, we're coming up on four years next year and, um, you know, you have to grow. You can't just right. stay stagnant. You have to do new stuff. You have to bring new stuff to the table. And, you know, at first I was a little bit nervous to put a little bit more of my flair into it because I'm like, okay, I really haven't so far. Like, I wonder if if people enjoy it. But, you know, the little tidbits that I have given so far, people have really enjoyed. So I'm really much hoping that people will enjoy, you know, once the new logo is up and once we have the new music in. So we'll see. Yeah, it's great that you're thinking about that branding and stuff. Have you ever thought about maybe starting your own wine? To start what? Your own wine. I have not because that is very, <laughs> it's a very intricate process. I have, I think I listened to a Bella's podcast and I've listened to a couple other videos of winemaking and, oh, I listened to Carmela as well. I, yeah. you know it's definitely something that's kind of like a dream type of thing because it's very expensive to do and it's very time consuming and I'm the type of person that if I do something I've, I'm very hands-on with it I don't want to give it to someone else to do I want to do it myself and I feel like that's kind of what winemaking is like you would definitely need to you know be picking your own grapes and be hands-on with the design and um, you know, maybe one day, maybe in a couple years or, you know, 10 years from now, I'll decide that I want to make a wine. But right now, I, I definitely couldn't commit the time that I wanted to to create my own wine. <laughs> of course. It's just that in my imagination, I can just see it like wrestling wine down wine <laughs> or like, I don't know what name it could go with. But just in my mind, I can see it at the store. I can see it in public <laughs> or something like my brain is just all the way there <laughs> i just don't know why but it's just like it just popped into my head like oh a wrestling wind down wine that would be interesting um would be interesting. But, yeah it would so what are some of your hobbies outside of wrestling i enjoy traveling i like trying new restaurants here in las vegas um I, I have to throw going to wrestling shows in there because I feel like I'm going to stuff almost every month now, which is crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, just relaxing and just, you know, enjoying time with friends and family. I'm very low key when I'm not, you know, recording or doing something with wrestling wind down. I just like to keep to myself. And I do enjoy, you know, an occasional binge watch on um, Netflix or Hulu. I obviously still really like reality TV. So, you know, The Circle, Love is Blind, The Ultimatum was a shit show, but, you know, I like <laughs> the, the different the different stuff like that. Okay, that's cool. You know, I tried to watch The Ultimatum, but then I just decided to back away from it. Um, you know what, I probably should have did the same thing. Because to me, I guess because I've been in a long-term relationship for so long now, almost 10 years, and it's just it's sometimes it's just when I see stuff like that, it sort of it, it sort of gives off the impression that it has to happen when you say it happens or else you know everything that you've been through is null and void and it just bothers me yeah like it I just really it. bothers me like bothers parts of me that i just can't uh i just can't um and it's just like other reality shows like i was i used to watch reality shows like around the time there was flavor of love and yes girl all, like Flavor of Love and I Love New York and <laughs> yes. um, Flavor of Love Charm School and stuff like yes. that. And America's Next Top Model. Like that was yes. really the kind of reality shows I would watch. And American Idol, of course. Yeah. Um, when it was on Fox and everything like that. Was, those were really the reality shows that I was into um, back then. But then it's like I kind of... And then I used to watch a little bit of Bad Girls Club too. Oh, but yeah. I kind of fell off, you know, with reality shows after a certain point. Cause they all sort of felt the same where everybody was fighting about something out in public and i was just like yeah i'm tired of this and i just <laughs> went to something else but i do acknowledge that you know it is still a very much you know lucrative you know oh, brand definitely. yeah so i do still respect it in a sense because i mean people start all kinds of careers out of that so i mean i get it i totally get it 
love it. <laughs> I, I'm just not sure if I could ever do it, but I just. Oh no, it. I wouldn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd be so scared. I mean, I love the camera, but I just don't think you know I could do a reality show because I'd be the one that would just run away from conflict. <laughs> I'm conflict avoidant, very much so. It's funny for you to love wrestling, but then be conflict avoidant. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. Um. So, who's been your favorite guest on your show? If you could narrow down. Hmm. I really liked having Lisa Marie Varen, also known as Victoria. I felt like that was one of the most amazing things that has ever happened to me. Um, and she was so kind and she really gave, you know, a lot of great information. And I really liked that interview. And I had the chance to meet her this year at WrestleCon in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she remembered me and she was so nice. And, you know, that's something that I'll never forget. Um, I always love having Iridian Fierro on. Iridian is uh, a part of Rest Friends, which is a podcast based in um, Chicago. Her and her um, cousin Teddy, they do wrestling coverage and stuff like that. Um, we host um, a monthly tidbit on my show or a show itself called Chardonnay and Cheese May, where we just kind of go through the gossip in the wrestling community and just kind of it's like girl talk. You know, I feel like we don't have a lot of girl talk within the wrestling community when it comes to like news and gossip and stuff like that. It's just on the timeline. So um, it's been really refreshing to do that with her. Um, and she recently joined our team as a social media assistant. I know when we were in Dallas, people were like, we love wrestling wind down and they were looking at me and her and she's like, <laughs> um, I, and I was like, just, we'll, we'll address it later. <laughs> like, but I mean, she's on so often that people are like, is she like, is she your co-host? She just pops on right. when she wants to. I can't tell her. No, that's my best friend. So <laughs> her Lisa Marie Varen, um, I really liked having um, Andrea uh, from, she is an executive producer with MTV, um, Nickelodeon, VH1. She did the Met Gala. I really liked having her on because she had a lot of good insight into her career. And I told her off air, I was like, your career is what I wanted when I was little. Like when I was like a teenager, because I, I still deep down inside, I really want an MTV show hosted by myself, but we'll see if that happens but the fact that sh i asked her i was like so have you ever heard of it's on with alexa chung that used to be on mtv she's like yeah i produced that i was like you did <laughs> i was watching i loved it all and she she just had her hand in so much stuff so many amazing reality shows and different shows that these networks have done and she was just so candid with her time and i learned so much from her so i would say those three i really also liked having um Victor Perry on I felt like he had great insight into his wrestling club and to see where he is now and I interviewed him like two months ago and then he had Sasha Banks in his classroom like a couple weeks oh later God. and I was like holy shit like this is huge like I already knew it was huge based on the reaction and it's just something that's so different from what other people are doing like there's not I don't see any other wrestling clubs out there and to have that recognized by Sasha Banks and her saying that she would go and then actually following through, those kids will never forget that. And that warms my heart so much. And he'll never forget that either. Like, oh, I just love it. <laughs> it was yeah, so I, horrible. Yes. I loved having him on my show too because I feel like it wasn't like it was, we were like right there together. Like when yeah. he was on your show and then he was on my show. And it's just yeah. like he was one of my favorite guests as well. Cause just look like hearing his story and everything that he loves about his music and then how much he pours into the kids and all of that other stuff. And then he told me about the surprise, but didn't tell me what was actually going to happen. He was just like, look, there's something on the horizon, but I can't tell you what it is, but it's going to be big. And I was like, okay. And then I just remember looking on my phone after work and seeing the Sasha ba that Sasha Banks came to the class. And I was just like, oh my God, come on children. Yes. And they were yes. so excited. They were playing with her. She was playing with them. It was just the sweetest thing. And I was Sorry. just so happy for them, you know, in that moment, because you know how many kids you know, like us who are like young and didn't have a place like that at yeah. school. And just the fact that he was able to give that to them 
even now it's just the most amazing thing on the planet and I just I just love it and then he keeps talking to them you know even as the show is going on with his live tweets and everything and I'm just like yes it's one of the most wholesome things in wrestling it period. really is I love it so I'm so happy that we were both able to have him on yeah. our shows and we can share in that and I love how you have Victoria too because he said that was one of his favorites and she, she did was, she was one of my favorites too because Victoria, man, her and Trish, they fought some wars, man. They sure did. Yes. Oh, my God. I love that. I love that for you. I'm so glad you were able to have her on. Thank Fingers you. crossed. Maybe she'll be on mine. We'll see. Oh. We Manifestation. Got to manifest it. Got to manifest it. So where do you gain your inspiration for a lot of your wrestling subjects that you talk about on your show when you don't necessarily have a guest? Um, well, I, I can kind of uh, go off of the new series that we're doing, which is called uh, The Life of a Wrestling Fan. So what the what the series is, is it focuses on individuals that have amazing careers that are not within wrestling or they might be. And they're also professional wrestling fans. So when I came across Andre, I was like, I really enjoy what she's doing. You know, she's a wrestling fan, but she also has this amazing career. And I just wanted to talk to her about her career. And I was like, but she's a wrestling fan. I was like, there's something I could do here. I was like, we can talk about how she likes wrestling, but we can also talk about how she, you know, integrates that in her career, which she has. She's been able to have like Dolph Ziggler and HBK, you know, in these studios with her as an executive producer. So the fit was seamless. Um, You know, I have some other ones coming up that I'm really excited about where, you know, they have large platforms or, you know, they have worked with WWE or they've done different stuff like that, but they're still wrestling fans. Um, So I guess you could say that I kind of came up with that, the life of a wrestling fan, because I wanted to showcase Andrea's career, but I also wanted to showcase that she's a wrestling fan too. And there are so many people that have these amazing careers. You know, it could be in media, it could be in engineering, it could be in, you know, all these different categories and sectors but they still like wrestling. They go home and they sit down with their wife or their husband or their kids and they still watch wrestling just like us. Um, So that was kind of my inspiration there. Um, There's been other ones where I focused on, you know, like gear makers or theme song creators, you know, the people that are in wrestling, but they're not necessarily in the ring. So that was another series that I did late last year um, that I really enjoyed. But, you know, I honestly just think about what my audience will enjoy. I know I'll enjoy it, but what they will enjoy you know i have a lot of people that um that i'm grateful that follow me that are within media and you know they might have not known about andrea before you know i had her on the show so you know that that creates a networking opportunity for those individuals and you know i really try my best to showcase a large amount of people you know not just you know women Uh, for a while there i was just focused on women And I feel like that is important, but there's a lot of, you know, very respectful and hardworking men within our community that are doing great things as well. So I've started to integrate that in as well. Um, But I really just like to keep it as diverse as possible. So people are just not, you know, bored with, oh, she has someone, you know, that did this on there, but she had that person on there last week. I want you to be shocked every time I, you see wrestling wind down on your, on your podcast page. I want you to be like, oh, wow, she has this person on. What do they do? Just gaining that interest and that intrigue from the audience is also what I go after when I'm trying to figure out what what should I put else? What else should I put on Wrestling Wind Down? Yeah. I like that a lot. Like you want to keep the keep the audience on their toes. Right. <laughs> I actually appreciate that. I can definitely appreciate um that mindset. And I also love, you know, how you were inspired to sort of tell the stories of everyone, which is something that I try to do a lot of the time too. Because I try to talk to, as as you can see, I'm talking to you, you're a host. And I try not to lean so heavily on talent, on wrestling talent. As much right. as I would love everybody and their mama to come on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. I mean, talking to the other people who help make wrestling work, it's just as valid. Those stories deserve to be told just as much as everybody else's. So exactly. I definitely admire, you know, your um, your get to itness when it comes to that. I totally admire that. I get it. Um, so have you ever considered pursuing a wrestling media career 
for a, a major mainstream promotion like WWE or AEW or Impact or the like? No. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. As much as I as much as I love wrestling and talking about it and learning about it, I can appreciate that I do not have a career in professional wrestling because I feel like I would just be worn out. I would be a perfectionist and want everything to be perfect because I'm interested in it. And, you know, it's not like I'm not interested in the job that I do, but I love professional wrestling. And I feel like if I were to work with one of these companies, I would pour my entire heart and soul into it. I wouldn't just, you know, half ass it. And, you know, when I was in college, I had the wild idea that I wanted to be a WWE intern one summer. Me and Haley, actually, we had talked about it on our lunch break one time. And we were looking at it and I was kind of like, oh, maybe, you know, but I feel like it's best that, you know, I do this as a hobby at this point. You know, if something comes along within, you know, a wrestling media, you know, not with WWE or a major promotion, you know, I might be interested in it. But in terms of like a WWE or an impact, I I don't see myself at this point diving headfirst into that. I understand that, you know, you're probably the first person who's ever said, you know, no. (laughs) <laughs> to, to that type of question that I asked like you're the first person who's ever said no and that is perfectly okay <laughs> in 96 episodes you're the very first person who's wow. ever said no <laughs> 96 episodes you're the first one no <laughs> I definitely feel like I just for me I just feel like I need that separation like I enjoy doing this so much as a hobby and being able to turn it on and off when you know when I want but I feel like as an occupation like you you have to do it every day like you can't just be like I'm not gonna go to work today like I probably won't go back tomorrow either like you can't do that like you you still work there for me you know if I you know decide tomorrow that I don't want to do the podcast anymore which I won't um I, I can just say I'm not doing it anymore and just peace out you know um, but people at work, sometimes they could do that. It just depends on the situation. But I like that separation of being able to do this as a hobby. And I want to enjoy it as much as I possibly can. I totally get it because some because some people really do have that, you know, mindset to where they feel like if it becomes a job, then they won't love it anymore. Yeah. So I completely understand that. You know, I didn't. I remember there was a certain point in my life where I didn't understand, but now I do. Mm-hmm. Because once it consumes you, it consumes you and it swallows you whole. You know, right. and you want to know that you have an, you know, an identity outside of, you know, where you work because that's not your whole identity. Um, right. So I totally get and understand, you know, why your answer would be no. Um, Because I just know as for me, as I get started, I just kind of want to enjoy the ride for where it might take me. Because it's taken me, you know, pretty far, a lot farther than I thought I'd ever be. Um, But if it takes me even further into a career where I am making money while talking about wrestling even more, like that would be fantastic. Like I would love that. Um, But at the same time, I also know that I would have to find my way um, in terms of figuring out who I am outside of that. Or mm-hmm. just having just a strong, you know, base in who I am anyway, outside of it. So I get right. it. I totally get it. So what do you think about the evolution of wrestling, you know, since you've been watching it? Um, and how do you feel about, you know, how it's evolved and what's good about it and what could be better about it? I think wrestling has its ups and downs. There's some months where I'm into it, like, you know, I'm very into it. And then there's other times where I'm like, okay, like, you know, I really don't like this storyline. I really don't like, you know, how this is going. And I'll admit it, like this Naomi and Sasha stuff has really kind of put a damper on me. Um, Mm -hmm. It just seeing the whole situation and, you know, the assumptions that are coming out and the way it's being handled by the company, it's really put a sour taste in my mouth. Um, You know, I still keep up with wwe obviously but i just i I will admit i do have hesitation on going to you know live events like we have a pay-per-view coming up here in july and i'm kind of like do i really want to go to that at this point i mean i don't know um i've really enjoyed you know the the success of roman reigns i feel like he's done a very good job in wwe and he keeps me interested in watching bianca of course 
Um, you know, even though her and Becky Lynch have had their issues, I do enjoy watching Becky Lynch because I feel like she's really grown as a character. And it's amazing that she could go and have a kid and just come right back and start her career right where she left it. Um, and, you know, there's other moms on the roster, too. I think it's incredible to see women that are raising kids, whether it's by themselves or with a partner, and they still have this, you know, they're still living their dream at the end of the day. I think that's beautiful. Um, but, you know, right now, it's like, it's it's honestly been really difficult just with the whole Sasha and Naomi thing. But, you know, I've been watching a little bit, a bit of AEW, which I haven't really been in the last couple of years. I might tune in here and there, but I wasn't like actually indulged in it and I feel like at this point I've really been keeping up with AEW on a level that I keep up with WWE which kind of surprises me too but um I really enjoyed you know the different people that they've brought in you know I really like the um the group with um John Moxley and Daniel Bryan and William Regal um mm-hmm. I really enjoyed you know MJF and Warlow's story and you know Jade her growth in the company and her body section you know, as well as some of the other women and men that are really, you know, starting to really do a good job there. I really like Scorpio Sky. I feel like he's done a really good job. Um, but also with AEW, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. They do stuff a lot, too, where I'm like, did y'all even think before you said that? Like, you know, the comments about women and who they're sleeping with and who they've been with. Like, I don't like that. And, you know, I feel like a good fan realizes when they don't like stuff within companies it's not just like i'm ride or die aew they could do whatever on this television and i'm just gonna still watch it no i feel like it's important to be like you know i did watch this show this week but i didn't necessarily like that comment that he said or she said like he didn't have to go there with that and that's okay i mean i think that we should we should be critical of what we're watching we shouldn't just consume it and just be okay you know with people stepping over boundaries that we might have personally um and same with wwe they've you know done stuff and said stuff and i'm like oh did you really have to do that so those are the type of things that i don't like but there are so many things that i do you know the representation that i've seen is just amazing within both companies obviously they could do much better but that's another subject for another time but what they currently have at the table and what they're bringing to the table i feel like we're at a good place but we can always grow more definitely that's a really great answer and a very honest answer you know in light of everything that is happening because i was watching raw um this week and i can admit with the sasha and naomi situation it almost felt like that it almost felt like a situation where you're um like something bad has happened to you like and it's almost like a situation where your mom got through disciplining you and beating your butt and then she comes in the room and asks you if you want something to eat and you don't want to be around them at that point that's kind of what wwe watching wwe is like right about now with the naomi and sasha situation it just feels hurtful if i'm being honest because you have these women that have given everything and done everything you know for this company and in the minute they speak out on something and it's almost like they're villainized for it and then it's just and then of course we don't know you know all of the behind the scenes stuff because of course we weren't there and we're not experts on the thing but it's just seeing the way that it's being handled and seeing, you know, so much discourse going on about it. It's really hurtful when you think about the talent and everything that these women have gone through, you know, to show that they love wrestling and to, you know, and the foundation that they are building even for future black women in wrestling. It's just sort of hurtful because it's just like since you've done it to them, it almost gives off the impression that you'll make an example out of anybody else or any other black woman who expresses her distaste about something um and just leave them out to dry and i'm hoping the best in the situation and i hope that you know they that peace can be found in the situation and if not then they'll go somewhere um where they are loved and appreciated and i hope they are being loved and appreciated you know even where they are even as they don't speak out about it but i hope that they are being loved in their circles and appreciated in their circles even now because it's hard um and i will say this though finding the positivity in wrestling is something that i try my best to do even when it's you know the hardest thing 
the when it's the hardest thing to do so i'm just you know still trying to find a way to do that and still trying to navigate that even as everything is sort of topsy-turvy right now and i do like i do like AEW at this point as well um with some of the stuff that they're doing but like you said you know it it wouldn't make any sense for us to just look at stuff you know and just look at it with rose colored glasses because if you have on the glasses you'll miss the red flag so exactly Mm -hmm. so what do you think about the evolution of women in wrestling media and how it's changed since you started and what um and what could be improved with that I think we're in a really good place. Um, There are a lot of, you know, women that are hosting podcasts, YouTube channels, um, Twitch streams. There is so much out there and it's very heartwarming. It's heartwarming to see women, you know, no matter their race, you know, their sexual orientation, they're able to showcase that they love professional wrestling. And, you know, I'm very proud because like I said, when, I first started, there were barely any, you know, women creating wrestling content. And now, you know, you have women like Denise Salcedo, you have, um, you know, you have Ella J, you have all these women that are, you know, on these different platforms, whether it's WrestleZone or Fightful or et cetera, or, you know, even women's wrestling talk. Like you have these women that are very knowledgeable and, you know, they're doing all they can to make sure that women have a platform in this community. Um, I think sometimes it can be a little bit, um, it can be a little bit like nerve wracking when you, you know, you first come in the community and you see it's all a bunch of men. But yeah. now, you know, with all these different women that, you know, are showing, uh, showcasing the different, uh, the different platforms that they're on, it makes it a little bit of like a, you can breathe if you're a woman, you know, starting your plat- platform or, you know, you're a fan because you're like, okay, there's people that look like me or, you know, there's someone that sounds like me that I'm able to listen to or ask questions to. Um, I, I think that the only way up is or the only way to go now is up at this point because I feel like we have so much out there for women and, you know, we just have to keep doing what we're doing and keep growing and, you know, be accessible to our, you know, our future women that are looking to enter the wrestling media. Um, I think the one thing and it's just like wrestling, you know, I feel like, you know, these older superstars, it's so good that they're resources to the younger talent. And I feel like we kind of have to do the same thing when it comes to wrestling media. Like we should be accessible for, you know, younger people to ask questions or get feedback from. We're all in this together. You know what I mean? Like we shouldn't be gatekeeping stuff over here. So I feel like we just have to keep doing what we're doing and the resources for you know whether it's someone in the community right now or it's someone just coming up like we have to band together yeah and I feel like that's something that is that has helped me a lot in my evolution is the fact that there were so many other people who had come before me um who were willing to reach out and help when I was saying you know this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm starting and they're like okay and then they would you know, just lift me up and give me encouragement or give me advice on things where I felt unsure about in certain places. And I'm still growing and just watching and then watching all these, I will say this though, like watching people like you and so many different women in wrestling, it made me feel like I wasn't alone at all. And I was just like, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to be okay. (laughs) I'm going to be okay. And even, you know, men have even also reached out and helped me as well so you know I do appreciate them but just seeing other women especially also women that do look like me and are and do come from different backgrounds and different sexual orientations and everything it makes me feel like wrestling is getting closer and closer to being what it should be which is truly for everyone right and I feel like media should be able to reflect that it shouldn't just be um men you know on the different cards for like media questions and stuff like that it should be women too because we know a lot about wrestling and sometimes we know more than more than the average man would say it. but yeah we know a whole lot more <laughs> and a lot more than the average man would a lot of the time but i feel like that's not really reflected um when you sometimes look at media calls or when you look at you know certain questions being submitted in for panels and stuff like that And I feel like ultimately that should be, you know, reflected a whole lot more. And I feel like we're on our way 
Um, but it's going to take a lot more work. But, you know, as long as there are people like us that are passionate about doing the work, then we'll be there and it will be good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So as a black woman, um, how is it, you did mention a little bit about diversity, but I want to ask you as a black woman, how do you feel about the evolution of diversity in wrestling? And what would be and what would need to be done to help us further succeed? Um, so I actually did an episode late last year where I talked about diversity and representation within WWE and AEW with Phil Lindsay of Grapsity, Court Kim, who's a journalist in New York, who's also a wrestling fan, and then Iridian Fierro of the Rest Friends podcast. Um, and we talked about it in full. You know, I feel like um for example, with WWE, like, yeah, they've grown. You know, you think back to, like, SmackDown in the late 2000s, and they were being racist on there. There was people, you know, with with uh, characters that were racist. And, you know, I go back and I watch that sometimes. I'm like, how the hell is this still love? How have they not edited that out? You know, mm-hmm. now I feel like they have, or I hope that they have enough knowledge to not do anything like that. Um, but at the same time, You know, right now we have one black woman on the main roster and it makes me sad. It makes me, you know, wonder, well, you know, what if Sasha and Naomi don't come back? Like, are you going to move up, you know, Lash Legend? Are you going to bring in another black woman? Because one black woman on your main roster is unacceptable. Like that, that. No, like it's just it blows my mind. Now, with AEW, they've had their own issues with diversity. Um they're doing a good job now you know they're bringing in you know their japanese talent they have black women on the roster that you know they have a whole bunch of you know different women on their roster but you know i always feel like there could be more um i really hope that they sign willow um i think she would be a great addition um but overall i think we just again we just need to keep what we're doing but i think wwe needs to just really sit down and think like we have one black woman on our main roster right now like how are we going to fix this because it's it is a problem like it's not like oh, okay well bianca's just here like you know maybe sasha and naomi will come back we're not going to worry about it like there are black women that tune in to raw and smackdown just to see naomi and sasha and right. when you don't have that your ratings will drop i don't keep up with ratings because I just don't like it's not something that interests me but you know I would be interested in knowing if their ratings have dropped since Sasha and Naomi have you know been off uh, television but you know like I said there are women and there there are men too who solely watch for to see people that look like them and when you don't right. have that that's an issue like you're losing your audience because they aren't tuning in because no one looks like them um, I <sighs> that it just makes me shake my head i was having this conversation the other day like it's sad it really is sad um obviously i'm a naomi and a sasha fan i hope they come back because um those tag team titles and seeing them win them at wrestlemania like again another moment that i'll never forget um the first two black women to hold the tag titles and the, the sasha's first win at wrestlemania And the fact that there are rumors that, you know, the tag titles might be extinct after this, they might not bring them back, even though they're supposed to be a tournament. Um, It's sad that it had to end with them. And it's sad that it had to end in a negative kind of manner. Um, I shake, I just shake my head. Like, I hope that we can do better in terms of diversity within WWE um, and AEW, you know, they had their issues when the year first started, which I'm sure you're aware of, but, oh, yeah. um, you know, that was never addressed. I feel like that was an issue with diversity as well. Like you can't just slander your talent online and WWE is slandering right now. So again, like I mentioned earlier, there are some weeks where you watch wrestling and you're like, you know what? I'm proud to be a fan this week. Like we're doing good. And there's other weeks where you're like, okay, I don't, I don't really like what's going on right now. And you openly admit that and that's fine. And like I said, right now I'm kind of at the point with WWE in terms of this whole thing going on where I'm like, okay, I don't like that. Yeah. I completely 100% understand that because as a black woman, seeing them win those tag titles, it meant a lot to me. Even, you know, I wasn't there, but just watching it happen, you know, and then watching Sasha get her first win, um, 
at WrestleMania, it was a very powerful moment. And to see those two women win and then also um, Bianca win and finally get her revenge, it was just like you have these three Black women at the peak of their awesomeness (laughs) and they all won these titles only for the women's titles to now just be like an afterthought because they announced the tournament last Friday and then Monday I didn't even hear anything else about it they just had singles matches for the women I don't yeah. recall hearing anything about the tag titles after that point point. and it's sad because it was started to give more opportunity for the women and that was what Naomi and Sasha were talking about and if they're now you know gone and absent or suspended or whatever it is that you were you're going with at this point and if those tag titles are still not on television then that just proves that they were right yeah and because they were right it's interesting that you that you said that you kind of mentioned that about you know all three black women winning at wrestlemania because that was what two months ago like it's just right. crazy to see like w- the progression that has happened within the last two months. And, you know, obviously when I was at WrestleMania, like I was so proud, like I would, uh, I just like, I could feel myself getting emotional, you know, seeing those moments and, you know, now thinking about, okay, we're like two or three months removed and what's going on. It's almost like you couldn't write this stuff. Like you, you would never think this would happen. Um, so I, it's just unfortunate. It really is. It is unfortunate. And I'm just hoping, I'm trying to believe that, you know, the best will come out of this situation and that hopefully WWE will understand that they're losing, you know, two of the best talent, two of the greatest talents that they've ever had. Um, and that, you know, if they do lose them, that they'll be losing out on a good, on a big chunk of their fandom when that happens. Absolutely. But one can only hope. Yeah, one can only hope, and it would break my heart if they did decide to leave, but at the same time, I know it wouldn't be over for them, but at the same time, I'm just really hoping for the best in the situation um, with that, and I am proud to see, you know, a lot of the diversity coming forward and the talent being pushed out there, but um, I just don't want to feel like with, with it being you make five steps forward and then five and then like 10 steps backwards. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's definitely how I just, I don't want to feel that way at all anymore. Right. So, so when did you realize that what you were doing in wrestling was important? That is a great question. Um, (laughs) The first thing that comes to mind is, when I was in Dallas over WrestleMania weekend and um, one of our followers came up to us and she was like, oh my God, wait, you're low from wrestling wind down. And she's like, I've been following you since the beginning. And, you know, she was just so excited. And, you know, I have never had that happen. Like, and I remember telling Iridian, I was like, oh my God, I said, I just, I couldn't believe that someone had recognized me and, you know, she was very nice and the words that she she shared, like, I still remember them. Like, she she didn't have to stop me. You know, she could have said, oh, okay, there's love from wrestling lying down and, and just said hi. But, you know, it, it meant a lot that she was able to take time out of her day and be like, you know, I've been listening from the beginning. It's, you know, it's so nice to meet you and stuff like that. Um, I think that was the moment that I realized, like, you know, like I said, I... I make these episodes, you know, I, I do stuff, I do podcasts, you know, I interview people, but I never sit back and think about like, you know, how important am I to the wrestling community? I really don't. Like, I just, I'm doing this because I enjoy learning people's stories and I enjoy professional wrestling. Um, I definitely didn't think, you know, college me years ago that, you know, I would have an impact on someone's life or, you know, people would be listening to me on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis waiting for me to upload episodes. Like, it's crazy to think about. I'm kind of just processing it as I'm answering this question because honestly, I've never sat back and really thought about it. Mm-hmm. And I understand that because when you really, like, it's like when you think about your impact, you don't really think that people are really paying you any attention. Right. When you're doing it, you just don't think anybody's really looking at you or paying you any attention. But then when you go out to the world and you realize people are, it's just like, whoa. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Really? For real? Me? (laughs) Yeah. 
and, and then, you know it, it could have to do with like hey. a little bit of, like a little sprinkle of imposter syndrome in there where you're kind of like yeah I, you know you do this yes. every day or every week or whatever like you don't realize like you know once you get out and people are like i listen to your podcast or you know i enjoy you know buying your merch or you know this or that and you're kind of like you do me like imposter syndrome like you like obviously you know what you're bringing to the table you're doing it every week or you're designing merch like but it's crazy to see like the like you said the amount of people that watch you or listen to you or that you had an impact on so wow yeah i guess maybe sometimes we should i guess both of us should probably just take some time to reflect <laughs> on that and just think about it you know and just intentionally remember that you know we deserve that and that imposter syndrome can just go to hell um <laughs> so what would you say the future holds for you Lo? so as i mentioned um we'll be doing a rebrand pretty soon so that will be exciting a new logo we'll have new intro and outro music um but wrestling wine now will still remain you know the same with the wrestling as well as some wine education um, I'm just looking, you know, at continually growing and working with different podcasters and different people within wrestling media to, you know, just gain those new experiences and work with new people. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward, you know, to attending to to attending other wrestling events and being able to meet people in person that I've only interacted with online. Um, yeah, I mean, just growing, honestly, is my is my goal at this point. I just want to keep growing and be able to be that voice for women out there who, you know, may not know where to start or just might, you know, start watching wrestling and don't, you know, really know who to listen to or, you know, who they should listen to on a podcast or watch on a YouTube video. Like, I just want to be that for them. I want them to feel not feel alone if they're, you know, going on YouTube or going on uh, Apple podcast and trying to figure out, well, is there anyone that talks about wrestling that sounds like me or, you know, I just, I want to be that consistent figure to someone. I think about, you know, myself as like a little girl, like I would have loved to have heard, you know, different women talking about wrestling. Obviously podcasting was like not around when I was little, but you know, even like a YouTube series or like a TV show, like I wish that we had that when we were little and that there would have been women figures like there are now for us to watch. The little girls and little boys now are just so lucky to have, you know, different people that they're able to listen to on their phones if they have one or, you know, watch on their computers or their tablets. Like, it's it's a great time to be a young wrestling fan, I will say that. But also, you know, us as adults, like, we, we are very fortunate to be able to, you know, produce content and be able to work with different individuals and, you know, um, digest the stuff that other people are doing. I'm seeing incredible interviews and podcast episodes from all of these different people, man, women, you know, groups of people. Um, so that's something I, you know, the future holds for me as well. Just learning more about the community and seeing who's out there that I can work with or learn from or, you know, anything. Well, that's definitely a pretty hopeful and an amazing way to answer that question and to end our time together. Lo, thank you so much for coming on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. And if you would just take this time to tell everyone where they can find you and follow you and anything else you've got going on, you can do that right now. Sure. So thank you so much for having me. Um, you can keep up with Wrestling Wine Down on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCAST. Um, we have merch. It's uh, shop.wrestlingwindownlv.com. We have our logo. We have um, we have our collection, Talk Re Pro Wrestling to Me. And then we just dropped our 1-800-WAR-DADDY merch, which the people are loving. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast again. I loved having you. And I've just... 
Okay, so I was sitting with my friends one day and they asked me, Stephanie, how do you record your podcast? And I said, with the Anchor app on my phone. And they were like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, it's that simple. It is absolutely free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone and your computer. And it will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can also make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. And it's got everything you need to make a podcast in one place. They even have classes and stuff that you can listen to that will give you all kinds of good tips on what you need to do in order to make the best podcast. So if you want to do this, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm or download the free Anchor app to get started. All right, so I just want to send another special thank you to Lo from Wrestling Wind Down for coming on the show. I'm so grateful for her presence on my show um, this week. So please under please follow her and support her in where in all the places that she said to follow her and everything, and also buy her merch and all of the above. So please do that and check her out and everything that Wrestling Wind Down has going on. And per usual, know that you can follow your girl Stephanie Hardy um, on Instagram at tw- and Twitter at Queen Steph Hardy. And you can listen to the Hardy Wrestling Podcast everywhere you get your podcast. That's my YouTube channel. Um, that's Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically everywhere. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Listen to your girl because your girl is everywhere. Also, know that you can follow the Hardy Wrestling Podcast on Instagram at Hardy Wrestling Podcast and on Twitter at Hardy Wrestle Pod. So this weekend, this coming weekend, I won't be able to have a new episode because I'll be at Alabama Comic Con. The fan table will be there. So please check out my fan table if you're going to Alabama Comic Con, if you're in the Birmingham area at the BJCC. Alabama Comic Con is really fun and it's full of all of the amazing fandoms that you could possibly love. There's anime, there's comic books, there's wrestling, there's even Trish Stratus, Lita, and Mickey James coming to do meet and greets and stuff and take pictures and stuff. So they'll be there. But in the meantime, while you're there having fun, please come and visit the Hardy Wrestling Podcast fan table. I'll have stuff to give out. We can talk wrestling. We can talk about whatever you like. Um, and if you want to, you know, sit down for an interview, if you have any strong wrestling opinions we can do that as well because i'll have a microphone it'll be time for that so you can do that so please come by and stop by there and i'm also getting ready to go to brooklyn new york juneteenth weekend for black wrestle fest so if you're in the brooklyn new york area please come and check out your girl on podcast row at black wrestle fest please follow them on instagram and twitter to get more information about it i'm super pumped about that um I'm carrying the Hardy Wrestling Podcast on the road and in a wrestling hub, no less. Like it's in, it's insane and I'm just so grateful for it. So of course, this is the Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl, Stephanie Hardy. And as usual, the theme song was performed by Josiah Williams, aka Mr. Wrestle and Flow. Until next time, be safe, lead with love, peace and understanding and stop the violence. Bye y'all.